What is going on today, guys? It's Stab, and today we are back with GBL Action Week 2 of the Global Battle League against Blaze and the Cinnabar Chimchars. Sorry it took me so long to get this uh, game up. It uh, was not a very cooperative week as far as the scheduling, as far as the recording was able to go, but we have it up today, and it's a very good game, so I hope you guys enjoy. Um, to your right, you'll notice on the layout both the team we are rolling with this week as well as the team that Blaze is projected to bring based on our squad. Now basically, uh, as per usual, there will be several links of interest in the description, mainly Blaze's channel, Blaze's perspective on today's battle, as well as our playlist for every single GBA action we partake in this season. Um, and then, of course, the team builder for this week will be down there as well. Now, it's quite long, so if you don't have time to watch all of it, I totally understand. But uh, just a quick rundown of the team we are bringing this week. We have our Mega Blastoise, mostly offensive. Uh, we have a Life Orb Lucario with dual priority, a Focus Sash a Selgor with fo with Final Gambit, a mostly physical with Ice Beam for coverage, a Kiram, a fo uh, Choice Car Victini, and then lastly a bulky Rocky Helmet Crocodile with Stealth Rock. So. That's our team. Now, we only made one change between the team builder and today's battle, and I will discuss that a little bit more when I go over our projected team for Blaze, which, is, of course, is the Mega Altaria, the Weavile, the Talonflame, the Umbreon, the Needle Queen, and the Zelf. Uh, so, the reason, I, the change I made of Blastoise, the change I made was to Blastoise, and originally I had four attacks, so Dark Pulse being able to hit and Oko the Zelf, but before it could kill me. But the reason I swapped that out was for rapid spin, and the reason for that was because I tend to lead off a Vitini in this in this game regardless. Basically, I can V-create most of his leads, uh, slash bolt strike it if it's like a Talonflame lead, but anything that's not uh, prone to die to a one hit from any of my attacks, I can just U-turn out pretty safely on. And the reason for rapid spin on Blastoise as paired with 18 is because if he leads off with a focus sash as elf and I go for the U-turn, I won't kill number one because it doesn't do enough damage regardless, and number two because it's focus sash. So even if I crit him down, he will still live on one. And he basically gets rocks for free at that point. And two of my best hitters this week are Victini and Kiram, which are both, of course, weak to rocks. And as you see on my team, if I did not have the rapid spin, I would not have any way to get rid of those, should that be the case. So, pretty small change, but it'll be very effective in today's game. So, without further ado, I will see you guys on the battlefield in just a few seconds, and we will learn how the week went. Alright guys, it is time to hit the field and get this shit underway. So... We see from his team that we actually predicted 98% of the team correctly. There was a chance that he could bring the uh, Gligar instead, the Umbreon, but if he did, his uh, team kind of got lit up by Kiram like a pinball machine, so it's a good thing, uh, in his part at least, that he brought the Umbreon. Um, so, as far as the team composition, we uh, pretty much win with either Blastoise, Lucario, or Kiram. If we get rid of the Talonflame, Lucario wins. If we get rid of the uh, Umbreon, Kiram wins. So yeah, uh, you guys already know we are looking at leading off with the Choice Scarf Victini. Either clicking V-Grade or U-Turn, depending on what he leads off with. Oh, and before we get started, real quick shout out to uh, Jolt, my boy from the Togo Minorities. He uh, said it was impossible to predict a team like this, but apparently we did pretty well. So uh, GG Jolt, and uh, we're going to get on with it. Alright, so I'm going to lead off with my... Uh, Victini, like I mentioned, as he leads off his Weavile, this is great just because he did not lead off with his Zelf, so he's not getting up Stealth Rocks. I also don't think this, the Zelf had Stealth Rocks, just because if it did, I feel like he would need to lead off with it and get up, up, up as soon as possible because the two biggest threats to his team, being the Victini and the Kiram, um, are whittled down by Rocks rather easily. Um, but yeah, also, I don't expect him to be a uh, Choice Scarf, uh, Choice Scarf Weavile, so U turn is pretty safe just because his experience in the format is not that much and that's not really a move set most inexperienced players use. So I thought it was figured I figured that it was pretty safe to do a U turn regardless of what type of Weavile that was. Anyway, he actually does me a huge favor here and he switches out first. I think he was fearing the fire move knocking out his Weavile and that's why he went to Needle Queen. Um, if that's the case it's still a kind of not very good but sort of good play just because Needle Queen can't take two V-Creates from my uh, from my Weavile but he doesn't know that 
So maybe that's why he did it. Um, if you predicted the U-turn first turn uh, and not the fire move, this is actually a pretty good play on his part. Anyway, so I'm just going to go for the U-turn. I get off 9%, which is a, a very small amount. But this next turn, real time, took me a while just because I didn't really know what to go into on the... Uh, on the Needle Queen, but I did the calcs and I discovered that that small 9% damage-wise from the U-turn put him well in range of an Ice Beam from Kirim. Kirim pretty much didn't have a switch in on his team, so I just click Ice Beam, and luckily for me, as you're going to see, he actually stays in and he just drops to the Ice Beam. I do take a little bit of Life Orb recoil, but that's fine in the grand scheme of killing off the big and the Neo Queen, which is a huge threat to my team. Now he goes out into his Talonflame. Now, I know I can live any hit from this thing and fire for Bolt Strike and kill it, but at this point in the game, it's still really early, and I do have my dedicated switch in my Rocky Helmet Crocodile uh, to switch into any kind of Talonflame this is. And as you're going to see here, um, he actually goes for the Fire Blast. Now, I really don't agree with him having Fire Blast in this game, just because even though I brought the Acelgore and I brought the uh, Lucario, after Rock's damage, Lucario can just knock it out with uh, Extreme Speed. Acelgore was sashed, so even if he hit me with Fire Blast, I can get off some solid damage with HP Rock. Not to mention, none of these things would be switched into Talonflame ever, so I'm not really sure why Fire Blast was a go-to move or something like Will-O-Wisp, which would cripple... Um, my Lucario crippled my uh, Crocodile and just wear down some of my bulkier things like Blastoise. So if he was going to run a fire move that wasn't Flare Blitz to do massive damage to a lot of my things, um, Will-O-Wisp probably would have been a better move to choose, but uh, he had Fire Blast. We had 20 Spadef investments, so uh, we eat that up, you know what it is. And uh, he actually goes on to Weavile here. Now, I'm just going to go for Knockoff. Uh, I went for knockoff on the town flame because any kind of damage on the town flame, a uh, knockoff I did believe did like 45 to 60 percent damage or something like that, maybe even more. I don't remember the calc for that one, but we could knock off his item and put him in range of Lucar's extreme speed. So he actually switched in his Weavile, and this was another questionable thing that happened just because left horse Weavile. Now I understand not wanting to take uh, life orb recoil, I guess, but Weavile's power comes in its speed and its ability to hit hard with life orbs. So left horse Weavile, plus not to, not to mention Weavile's bulk is absolute shit. So not really sure why he hit leftovers, but uh, we knock it off and I'm not going to take an icicle crash. I'm just going to go out into Blastoise. Blastoise should be able to eat up anything that he wants to go for as he actually goes for the avalanche. This was strange for two reasons. Number one, I didn't even know we've all got access to Avalanche. Um, if you guys don't know what Avalanche does, it, uh, it's a pretty high base power move that actually doubles if you go second, which sounds pretty cool in on paper, but we follow reaches 383 speed, which is faster than most mons that aren't like scarfed or anything like that. Um, but rarely ever will we all go second to gain that power. So Icicle Crash is definitely a better option here, but uh, I'll take it. Uh, I'm just gonna mega evolve. I know I can hit. Uh, I can know I can hit this Weavile with the Aura Spears. He goes for the Brick Break, which is also very strange. Maybe he predicted me to go to cure him. Uh, maybe he predicted me to go into Lucario and revenge him with Bullet Punch. I don't know. But uh, I'm just gonna go for Water Pulse. The reason I went for Water Pulse was I could have gone for Aura Spear, but I didn't really want to switch into his Self and be able to get off a hit or his Altaria. So. Or even his talent flame, because I don't want to take a Brave Bird this early in the game. So I just go for Water Pulse. Does a hell of a lot. I actually get a pretty low roll here. And uh, because after the uh, damage from the U-turn, it did have a pretty solid chance to just knock it out. So instead of sacking off his Weavile, he goes into his Zelf as I go for the um, the Water Pulse again. Getting off more damage. Um, it was a pretty early game, so I don't know if I would have sacked the... Weavile at that point, but still, he let me get off more damage on one of his other offensive mods, so I'll take it, and the luck of Trev the Lord is with Stab and the Sacred Fire, as we do get the uh, confusion here. Here I decided to risk my Blastoise, because I am wearing down his team, and I just had a feeling he would get confused and whack himself, which he does. I'm just going to fire off another Water Pulse, it was the best thing to hit most of his team, and get rid of the Zelf. Another huge shot down, and a kill for Blastoise. He goes into Altaria here. I know Luke to Har Altaria can't one-shot me with anything, and I don't want him to get a Dragon Dance for free, so I'll just fire off an Ice Beam. does a hell of a lot, and I get the Freeze. Now, the Freeze is unfortunate because anytime you get a ha you get hacks, it's obviously bad. But as you're going to see later on in the game, this Freeze did not matter as much as the fact of how much damage his Altaria took. So he does remain frozen, so I don't have to worry about my Blastoise taking any unnecessary hits. He actually swaps out into... 
is Talon Flame. I just want to run that Ice Beam to finish off the Altaria. And you're going to see this does around 45%, which is a good chunk. And he gets a Leftover's Recovery. So now we see his Leftover's Talon Flame. So now the Crocodile walls it indefinitely. Um, he actually goes for Acrobatics. Um, this kind of showed Blaze's inexperience, um, maybe with the game in general, just because. Anytime you run acrobatics, you gain a boost from not having an item. The fact that he had leftovers and acrobatics um, didn't really make sense. I guess you could have leftovers and brave bird just to get some uh, the recoil back, but definitely not running. Definitely running an item with uh, left item with acrobatics is a no no. So kind of bit him there. But I'm just gonna fire up water pulse, kill off this talent flame. Talent flame, regardless of what set he is. It can do can do a lot of damage and is obviously a threat. So Blastoise picks up another kill and he goes out to his Umbreon. Uh, he's gonna protect for his turn just to see what I'm gonna do. Um, pretty good play on his part and I believe I just fire for an Aura Spear to try and hit it. I know I can three hit KO him even if even if he's max special defense max HP. Um, so I hit an Aura Spear. I don't expect him to stay in and another. Well, there was two plays that could have happened. There was two plays that could have happened. Either he doesn't stay in and he goes to his Altaria. And maybe he unfreezes and gets a hit off of me. I'm not sure at this game, at this point in the game that actually mattered if that were the case. But another thing is, the only offensive attacks Umbreon, Umbreon usually carries are like foul play or the odd... Uh, well, really, it's just foul play. But anyway, I was expecting either a dark move or a switch out. So I go into Lucario knowing that I'm justified. I can get an attack boost. And sure enough, he goes for the dark pulse, which was interesting. Um... He actually gets, he so he gives me the attack raise. He's going to go for protect there. Now, at this point, what's left? We have a Altaria that's low. We have this Umbreon that's at full health. And we have Weavile that's taking damage. So, we're in a good position. Because right now, Lucario can pretty much just clean up the team. Get the 6-0 and get the win for the City of Fire. So, he's going to protect here as I go straight for a close combat. I'm sorry, that keeps happening. But, uh. Yeah, so he protects on the close combat, and then uh, I end up going for the ice punch. This was a really bad play, just because I th forgot how much HP the Altaria was at, and I thought ice punch would do more. But in hindsight, knowing that it's at was at like thirty percent, I could easily just clicked. It. Regardless if he switched out or not, I could have clicked in close combat and killed it. Um, so I make a really bad play there, and it's actually going to cost me the 6-0, as you're going to see. He foul plays here, so we get Dark Pulse and foul play. He foul plays, he gets a crit. Now, the crit did matter, because it even at plus 1, it only does 34 to 40% maximum from a standard Umbreon. So, crit definitely mattered, and I lose my Lucario because of it. But then again, the crit didn't matter, because if I had made the right play, it would have been irrelevant. So, I go out of my Victini. It's the best uh, matchup against this Umbreon and most of the things he has left. He's going to protect here. Um, he didn't get any leftovers recovery, I don't think. But, I go for V-Create on his Protect. And then I just go for V-Creator again. Because he can't live a V-Create. Um, I think I do like 80% min and he was at like 60. So, there was no way he was living regardless. And I do get a crit there. Obviously, did not matter. And... We've, and Victini picks up a kill against uh, the Umbreon. So Umbreon's out of the way, and at this point, he's pretty much lost the game guaranteed. Now, I don't want to take a knockoff, especially at minus one, partially because that would be a bad play just to stay in at minus one against a uh, Weavile anyway. But also, I kind of want to save differential. So I'm just going to go back to my Blastoise. He's already proven that his Blastoise can't really touch me at all. So I can figure, I figure out that I can take two hits. As he goes for a Brick Break there, and then he's going to follow up with a Dark Pulse. Yes, it would have been bad if he'd actually flinched me on this Dark Pulse, because he would have been like, kill me with another one. But luckily he doesn't. I just click Aura Spear. Blastoise picks up kill number three, and he's down to his Frozen Altaria. And this is where the Freeze actually did not matter, regardless of the situation. Just because I end up outspeeding his Altaria with my Blastoise, clicking Ice Beam and winning the game. Uh, doing some investigative calcs after the game, I learned that... For him to be like adamant nature, and for Blastoise, who is running just two, running enough speed to outspeed Min Speed Gligar, so 207, uh, for him to be slower than me, he would have to have 40 or less speed EVs. So, yeah, the, the freeze didn't matter. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the battle, please leave a like, leave a comment as to how you think I did. Uh, subscribe if you have not, and we will be back next week. Week 3 in the GBL will be against uh, the... What do you call them? <laughs> the, the, the Portsmouth Pinchers and Liam. Uh, yeah. So, looking forward to that. I know I am. And, uh, yeah, guys, I'm Stab, and I'm out.